friends, I hope you're having a positive day. I just wanted to start off by saying that it took me a long time to become an avid reader. I always loved seeing people reading and it looked very comfortable and calm and I really wanted that in my life. So I just never gave up trying and finally I became one. At times I would take years in between to actually try to read again and even in school I usually use the cliff notes which is just a way to break down a book like bullet point it so that way you don't have to fully read the book but you get the idea so I would do that. I only just became an avid reader in 2022 and I don't really know the pinpoint reason why it decided to stick but a big part of my life changed and I think that in that solidarity and also with COVID and everything going on, being inside even more than I am now, I just started to try it again and things worked out. So I'm very happy about that. So now I have a pretty good understanding of my style and what I like to read. I'm never letting go of it. I want to continue to be an avid reader and it just brings me a lot of excitement. I have over probably 50 books that I have on a list just to make sure to read at some point or things that I want to get or things in that genre that I would like to try and read. So that's really exciting as well. When I would read, it was, it was more like it would take me months to finish one book. And now I can actually read a book in a week if I'm really into it. And I can even reread books that I have. So it's it's definitely something that's more liberating for me. I just always wanted to be a reader. It looked great, so I just never gave up on it. I personally love a physical book over an ebook. I understand the love for the digital version and it is more sustainable. But at this time in my life, I need that magic fully showing itself to keep me interested. It's cliche to say, but the smell of a book and the feel in my hands has a way of transporting you before even starting to read the story. I mainly read novels and chapter books. I also would prefer my books to have illustrations, but it's not required. Of course, depending on the genre that I'm reading, it may or may not fit in best with an illustration, so I understand why some of them don't have them. But for me being a visual person, it is more captivating and easier for me to kind of get the feel of things more than just the author describing what it looks like and my brain having to kind of figure it out and piece it together. So I do prefer that. I also prefer my books to be about an inch thick, so nothing too big or the smaller ones I still also like, but anything bigger than an inch usually is is too much for me. I start getting either bored of the story or I just feel like it's dragged on maybe. Um, in, in that regard too, I, I like things having a kind of normal size text so it's not too big or too small. And I also really enjoy shorter chapters. So it's, it's hard to stop in the middle of a chapter and you feel like there's unfinished business because you're stopping in the middle of it and you have to use your bookmark to make sure you know where you're at, but then you kind of have to get back into that headspace, especially if it's a really dramatic part or something that you just don't want to put down. That's really hard. So having shorter chapters just lets you be able to pause in the middle of it and have some closure. So I do prefer those. I find myself drawn to many genres. More specifically, I lean towards a mystical, fairy tale, more, more lighthearted book genre, as well as romance, of course. Love seeing people just like really romanticize their love and just enjoy the little things in life that don't cost money. And I also really like history. It was my favorite genre in school and I'm constantly watching things that have history in it and of course a lot of it doesn't stick in my brain so I have to keep re-watching it or watching things about the same thing but from someone else. So I actually really like that. I'm always surprised. I'm always trying to remember things. 
and reading books about history just adds to it. If it's in an older time language, like Shakespearean or something, it, it's a little harder for me to connect with, like um, Uncle Tom's Cabin. I have tried reading this book so many times and I will finish it. I will not not finish it. I think I've gotten up to halfway through it. So also in regards to history, I, I love learning about uh, black history. So anything that has to do with the slaves because they just did nothing wrong. It kills me and that's what makes the history so captivating to learn that and just learn from it. But also Auschwitz and concentration camps, same thing. They were, you know, just Jewish people or people that, I mean, had disabilities or sexual orientation was not the standard straight mindset. So it was just a big crazy mess. And I love learning about that part of our history. And that's a little cruel, I would say, because it is such a bad time. But I find it really important to know our history. And I love yeah. history, like I said. So definitely love that genre. I also read self-help books, um, just self-love and learning about how you can be a better person and treat yourself better is really important to me. But um, another genre, the last genre that I'm really into would be horror. So as much as I try to fight it sometimes because it is so negative, I love horror, anything paranormal and mysterious, murder mysteries, things like that. So I do have a couple of books in that genre, but I try to limit them. Don't want to read too much of it too, too many times at once, like same books. So I keep changing up the genres every time I read, which is really nice. My current favorite book is The Secret Garden. This is a development novel more whimsical, lighthearted, and so innocent. This book was originally written in 1911. There are many beautiful copies of the book and many remakes of the movie made, but I grew up watching the 1987 version. My second or tied favorite book is Anne Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl. Obviously a history genre, it is a classic originally published in 1947 a few years after young Anne's death. It is the story of a Jewish family hiding from the law in Amsterdam while Hitler was in power during World War II. Sharing the space with another family, Anne describes her mature feelings and experiences while in hiding for just over two years. The Energy Bus is a favorite for the self-help genre. Another easy to read and quick book, this one has easy to follow lessons that make you really think about your own response to actions you can't control. It can be relatable in any situation. This one was gifted to me from a job wanting to lift up their coworkers. The story is about a man wanting to save his marriage but feels his work and family is falling apart. The Wedding Date is a favorite for romance, an easy read that keeps you on your toes I found myself heavily invested in this one and not wanting to put it down. So I just finished reading Asylum by Madeline, Madeline, Madeline Rowe, R-O-U-X, and I liked it. It was a little less horror than I expected, especially with the cover. It's a great cover. Um, so I expected it to be a little bit more horror filled, a little bit more paranormal but it was still a really good book. It involves friends that, that meet in a kind of summer program, college, like they're in high school, but they go to college for a program over the summer and they get together and kind of figure out the, the mysteries of the college, which used to be an asylum. So it gets pretty interesting to figure out, you know, what's going on and what the end's going to be like, but it, it definitely has a little bit more friend drama than I had anticipated or would have preferred for myself. So that friend drama kind of took me away from the history and paranormal aspect of the book. I also just finished reading Bridge to Terabithia by Katherine Patterson. And this book is a classic. I loved the 2007 film growing up. I watched it and cried like a baby. So I kind of had higher expectations for this one. It is, is a beautiful story 
and it was very interesting to learn about the author in the back of the book because it's something that her family had went through it was kind of you know based on a true story so it really is a must read in my book it's just didn't the writing style didn't captivate my empathy as much as i had expected it to so it was a little bit off for me in that sense but still a really good read and it's quick and simple it's not very thick at all Currently, I'm reading The Sundown Motel by Simon St. James. It is one that Daniel recommended to me because of it being a more creep factor, chilling, and I, I think I just needed more of that from the genre. So this is one that I'm reading right now, and so far it's doing really good. I'm probably a fourth of the way through it, and it's only been a few days, but I... I feel captivated by it already and it's a few of the top books that I want to read is The World of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. This one is a more whimsical focus around animals and lighthearted. Matilda by Roald Dahl. This one I, I grew up watching the 1996 film so I really want to read the book and just feel it in a different perspective. but. Also, just loving the story and everything, I want to have the book in my collection. Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. This one, I've heard good things about it. It's similar to The Secret Garden, and it is more about the life of an orphan girl on a farm with her siblings, so it's just kind of that kind-hearted, more childish, I guess, in a way. but. A lighter read, something that's not as heavy, I would call it, as like Harry Potter or other young adult vampire, you know, fictional books. So that one also looks really good. Lily's Promise by Lily Eber and Dov Foreman. This one is probably my top that I want to read really soon because it is about Lily's life in Auschwitz and how she survived it and her whole story of just coming to be and, and how she experienced everything through her own eyes. So that one is really captivating already. And Beyond Words by Carl Safina. This one is just going through the life of some wild animals and especially my favorite, the elephant. So I've watched lots of documentaries on the life of an elephant and can tell you a whole bunch of information on it, but having a book that it kind of goes through the life as well like a documentary would but in a book form and just learning a little bit more about a couple other animals too sounds really interesting and i love the name beyond words so you don't have to always have words and words aren't always all that so having something like an animal that's so pure that can't talk to you and tell you things you just have to observe their behavior and their natural instincts, and I'm really excited to read that one. I put a few decorations up to make it feel more homey and inviting, but also bridge the gap where new books will go as we get more. A few have meanings, like this sign Daniel made for me on Canva for an anniversary. It says 1700 miles couldn't keep us apart because distance means so little when someone means so much. Because we were long distance for the first few months of our relationship, this means a lot. This framed quote I received as a graduation gift from my interior design teacher, and it says, I figure if a girl wants to be a legend, she should go ahead and be one, by Calamity Jane. And this forever rose made of metal that lights up, Daniel gave me for another gift sometime at the beginning of our relationship. These are some other books I enjoyed reading. I still have a few to read that I own because I started collecting books before I started actively reading, just knowing one day I'll get to them. I never gave up the desire to read and thankfully one day it stuck and I had the books waiting. I hope you got some good ideas of things to read or try to become a reader. Reading really can be a break away from life and a good difference from a screen. Feel every page you turn and take a deep breath as you're transformed into another world. Thanks so much for watching and giving my growing channel the support. Good luck on your journey and stay positive.